This is the announcement. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful release. It's a beautiful release. Uh, 4.19. They have updated the user guide to explain scroll wheel right and left for those who have that. And I can read about that. In the, that that's like the top item here in the changes. That, that says a lot about uh, this release. I, I love it. I love the release. Um, always include uh, the marks property in IPC. It, it feels like it's maybe, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying this to brag, it, it's uh, more of, of a sign that, that there is something seriously wrong with me that I instantly knew what this meant. Uh, what the, uh, uh, or I, I at least think I know what it means, but I'm pretty sure uh, I know what it means. Always include the marks property, even if empty. What that means is that um, yeah, let's do this quickly. Here. I3 MSG T subscribe. There is probably a smart way to do this, but we do it like this. Window. There, there, there. Clicking a window, clicking this, we get this. Yeah, we also make it pretty by piping it to GQ. Clicking this there. You see here. We get a JSON representation of this uh, container here, basically. We can see all the properties, but we will not see any marks property here because this uh, container or window didn't have any marks. God damn it. There's something. I, I restart and dock and undock my computer a lot and somehow it, it kind of breaks my listener script. I have to look into this and yeah, we we'll get back to it, whatever. Um, I just want to show you here, if we mark this window here, I think we can just do this i3 msg uh, mark a mark. Now if we do this again and select this window, we should see this mark. There it is, we can see the marks property here now. And I am actually running the old version of i3. I don't even know if it's out yet, so maybe we should see. I don't think it's available on Pacman, it usually takes a couple of days. Uh, Pacman SS i3 WF. Oh, it's still 4.18 on. Pac-Man and I, I, I will wait till, till it's uh, released by, by the distribution, which I come back to why, but I always do that anyways. But the marks property, it's only visible if there is a mark. If there is no mark, then this property isn't visible in the JSON output, which I know, this sounds <laughs> like the weirdest thing, like whatever, <laughs> and it is in a way whatever, but this uh, makes the JSON a bit unreliable because some of these uh, properties they are not always there and there is actually maybe some i3 developer is watching this video who knows um, there is another uh, property like this title format is the same way if there is no title uh, custom title format for a window I believe that this whole title format property is also just like the marks it's just not there uh, so and I have done a lot of parsing on this JSON and it took me a while to realize that sometimes my, my parsing just didn't work and it was because of this that some properties are just missing so then you have to set up rules to, to make sure about that and I guess they have fixed that now at least with the marks property okay a great feature everyone has been waiting <laughs> Next one, get binding state command for the IPC. I didn't really know what this was, so I went to uh, i3 GitHub. And yeah, here we can see I, this is what I searched for, for here. And get binding state, uh, apparently it is, uh, you can use this to get the current name of the binding mode. Because you can set different modes, you know. I think in the default uh, i3 configuration, there is a mode for resizing. So if you would use this, then it would say, okay, the name of this mode is resize. 
prior to this I don't think there was a, a, a sane way to do that. I never really use modes and stuff, but I know some people use modes very heavily. And, and this, you can probably do some interesting things with this. Uh, so, sure, great, great. Clarify workspace name field semantics. I'm not sure what this is. Document parse error command reply field. Not sure what that means. I3 bar don't care. I really don't care. And it, it feels like when you read these uh, uh, release uh, uh, notes, it's always like, whoa. So that was an issue with I3 bar. I, I'm glad I didn't use that. This, this is like a standing. Uh, every single release, they fix a memory leak in I3 bar. Whatever. So I will not discuss it. I don't use I3 bar. I3 input, I, I use that even less. Uh, so whatever. I3 D menu desktop supports sim links in search port. I think this is a good thing. Uh, but I'm not really sure. I don't care about that either. Pod to HTML render. I, I think this is what uh, generates the, the I3 uh, web page. Maybe the whole page or just the, 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 docu the, the user documentation stuff. Not sure. It's something with that. Then here we have an actual feature kind of thing again here. I had to look this up as well. Uh, tiling from and floating from criteria. So I did the same thing here. Went to the GitHub and, and searched for that stuff in the code. Damn it. Search for that stuff in the code in this repository. It's also kind of nice to see that it is uh, in such few places and this uh, T test cases, these are test cases, you know, so... So... Uh, I actually opened this to, to get a sense of what it was, uh, the user guide. And floating from and tiling from are criteria you can use. Uh, barely knew that you could use this floating and tiling. I think they are quite new as well, maybe two, three versions uh, ago, meaning two, three years ago. Uh, but floating from is like floating, so it will match uh, any floating window. You can add this just as you, you know, you can add like match uh, an, an instance, match a class, uh, but now we can also add this match floating from. It takes two possible values, auto or user. And if you set auto, it will only match windows that was automatically opened as floating. Uh, I wonder how many windows that really is, uh, that is automatically opened as floating in i3. Uh, feels like it isn't many. Or if the user have created, uh, made it floating. Uh, meaning you man manually send like a flo floating command to, to a window, that, then it will it will match if you set user as the argument. And I believe all of my windows initially have this user uh, floating state. I haven't looked into this, but I feel that there is something here that I can make use of. Um, you know, I, I have this IPC uh, script, i3, i3. Here it is. That sets all uh, windows to be floating by default. So a new window event occurs, and then if, if it's not in the don't float group here, it will always set floating enabled. And I think I'm pretty sure that this will set also user set floating because this is not set by i3, it's set by me, even if it is via script like this um, and you can do the same thing with the uh, uh, tiling windows so tiling from if, if it's the user who made it tiling or if it's the window manager who, uh, who did make the window tiling and I wonder if this I have to look into this a bit when I get the new version uh, I will definitely uh, experiment a bit with this and it might make it so that my my, 
my script here will be redundant because the reason I am using this Python script, I made videos about this, is that I needed to, to set this global rule to make all my windows floating in a Python script. Otherwise, that rule got triggered uh, by I, the i3 config. Every time I reload the config, it, it would uh, set windows floating when the title changed and stuff. This is a weird thing. We can, yeah, we can talk a bit about that soon here in this video, actually. Uh, see some of the features that weren't uh, uh, added in this release and what's, what's to come in i3. Because I, I kind of follow i3 quite co closely, even if I don't really uh, uh, contribute anything to the, pro to, to, to the project. I, I find it a very fascinating uh, 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 software project to follow. I think you could do that even if you're not using i3 and it's a good example of how, uh, in my opinion, a project like this should be managed and, and handled. Whatever. But I do this, I have to do this in a separate script because doing this in the i3 config it doesn't really work. It, then it will set windows floating that I don't want to be floating anymore. And I wonder if it's not possible now to instead make some crazy rules with this um, uh, uh, with these new criterions here not really sure but it's interesting and the, it's a cool cool addition this we'll see uh, if it's useful mention Rofi in the default uh, config that's a change here now to this new, <laughs> new, new uh, version uh, allow PPT and PPT I think that stands for percentage uh, values in move directions and this has been a weird thing for me since when I started using uh, i3 uh, and that was several versions ago like uh, 4.12 or something uh, Back then it was really weird to move windows uh, and resize windows because you had to know if you were supposed to use PPT or PX and stuff. It, it was super awkward, but now it kind of just works. But you can never move a window with PPT, whatever. Now, you can, now you're supposed to be able to move them with PPT, but uh, it is kind of weird to move something in percent. And what does that really mean? So, so let's say I have this this window and I move that 5% to the right. What, what does that mean? Is it 5% of the screen width? Is it 5% of the window width? Or is it 5% of the distance that is left to the right side of the... I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a super weird metric and I would never use that. But apparently now you, now you will be able to do that. You're also allowed matching on empty properties. I'm not sure exactly what it means and how it works. If, if, if you're now supposed to be able to do this, like i3 message and then say class equals nothing. So this should match any window that doesn't have a class. I think this is what this means. Not sure. Also I have no idea where and when it would be used, but whatever. They've also fixed a bunch of uh, issues here. Always very fringe issues because i3 is a very stable uh, uh, program uh, considering it is a, a window manager for xorg so, so uh, uh, they have fixed this to ensure born shell in the nag bar I, I have no idea what, what why or whatever memory leaks uh, crashes on invalid json in i3 bar and you know i3 bar it's been why, why why are all these issues there at all? I, I don't understand. Whatever, they have fixed them. Ensure client windows have a size of at least one pixel after resize. Yeah, I haven't tested this. Well, at least floating windows, you cannot resize them. How small can I? Yeah, tiling windows, you can actually make. Or is this max here? I guess it is because I have so many tabs here. I wonder. I wonder. Ah, whatever. Let's. I wonder how small they can make a window. That's what I'm wondering. Okay, what, what do I have here? Okay, now we have a good 
innovator with just one cup here. How small can we make it? Can we make it smaller? No. It would actually be, for me, or me, it, whatever. I, I remember I was thinking once, once upon a time in my old life. Uh, like one solution instead of sending containers to the scratch pad you could resize them to zero pixels that, that was uh, an idea I had once but uh, probably a really bad idea maybe that is possible now I, I, I don't know limit workspace numbers within zero and uh, <laughs> int 32 max and int 32 max uh, I believe that's a uh, uh, Unsigned in 32 bit integer. Um, let's see, do I have this uh, from bin here? Yeah. So 32 bits, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Mom, we learned how to count in English today. This is the number. Is it right? I, I don't know. Something like this. This is like uh, quite smaller than I anticipated. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, right so that's a million four billion okay so you cannot have a workspace number <laughs> that is four billion <laughs> three hundred millions anymore you are restricted to a number between zero and this when you create your workspaces yeah that, I, I guess it's good maybe the issue is that you have a few too many <laughs> workspaces when, when, when 4 billion is too much, but uh, who am I to judge? Uh, fix a bug with tiling resize inside floating container. Hmm. I don't know, it is uh, possible to have a split container floating. You can So this, now I have, uh, this is uh, what is it? Horizontally split here, four containers inside a tabbed container. And I know that this tabbed container, it have a mark. Um, MSG get marks. MSG dash T get marks. Yeah, it's called I3 theta C is the mark of the tab container here. I think I can do this. I3 MSG con underscore oh, let's put this in quotes. Con underscore mark equals I3 theta capital C. Um, maybe no, this should be enough. Uh, floating enable. Now you see, <laughs> we have uh, tiled windows that are floating in space, ladies and gentlemen. We are floating in space, and apparently there is an issue here, so I will probably trigger that now. Let's make this a browser. Send the browser to work this too. Fix a bug with tiling resize inside a floating container. Okay, I don't know what that bug is. I never <laughs> float a tile container, but okay, if I resize this. Yeah, it is a bit weird, right? It's like, what am I really resizing here? I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I want to, yeah, if I, if I drag this one, this one here, I want to resize this, yeah, this uh, container here, where it feels like it resized the whole window instead. Maybe that this what it is a weird thing. What is, what, what is actually supposed to happen there? Who knows? Uh, if we instead now do this, let's do 
focus exec um, yeah let's do note start up id i3 theta mc well that will or will this will get weird this will get super weird okay i'm not sure how to get that back to to where it's supposed to be Let's see what the, no, if I do this, I will probably get the red box of death. I have a feeling I will. Because what this really does, it, it will try to move uh, a container to uh, to this container, actually, to i 2 C. Uh, and if, but if that, yeah, this, this is like begging for red box of death. Let's not do that. Let's just live here with our floating tile container. Another time. Correctly handle mouse resizing full screen containers by not propagating uh, mod right click to full screen clients. And since I'm using the old version here, I can test these uh, bugs maybe. So here I have SXIV. This is just an image here of a great uh, um, album by Om Adva Advaitic Songs. If I press Super and F11 here, it goes into full screen. And I guess that in this version of i3, I can hold that. Alt and right click. No, yeah, no. Huh. I, I, I have no idea what, what I was resizing there. You see here, what, what's this? You don't want to do that. That's an issue, I guess. And let's. Uh, Yeah, some weird, uh, it triggers some, some resizing. It didn't really resize the window, but it triggered some resize stuff there. So I guess these are related to that. Not propagating mod right click to full screen clients. Yeah, you shouldn't, it, it, it shouldn't be possible at all. But you, why would you trigger that uh, event at all on a full screen window? Do not try to resize. Okay, okay, we got it. Uh, do not focus floating windows changing workspace with configure notify. I don't know what that means. Set net desktop viewport after. I don't know what that means. Bug with nagbar. No one cares. F fix conflict with when moving parent of full screen window to. Not sure what, uh, how that works, but probably a good thing. Removing parent of full screen window. So you have a full screen window. That full screen window belongs to another container. Let's say if I would make this window full screen, which I guess I could do here now. Um, we should, if we mark this window, I3 MSG. Mark arrow. Okay. Now this window should be marked arrow. To make that full screen, super F11. No, and then we move the parent. So, uh, yeah, okay. So if we would move I3. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do this. I just want to try to trigger the bugs. It's like, how, how did this... <laughs> you always ask yourself, when did this really occur so someone could find this bug, you know? So, i3 msg con mark poor i3 theta c or i, yeah. Con mark i3 theta C uh, how is it now? Is it move it, it's such a weird um, is it move to workspace three? Can we write that? Yes, we do it. Now it is a workspace three. Uh, move it back to workspace one. And then we set the sleep here. Sleep should be enough. And then if I 
do that. And then click here. Now that should get moved here to workspace 3, the main container, or its parent, this Windows parent container have been moved while it's been uh, in full screen. If I exit full screen, where are we done? Nowhere. Ah, because we moved it to workspace 1. Stupid. Workspace 3. Going to full screen. Doesn't feel like anything. Well, okay. Yeah, then it moved it to workspace 3. And if I go there, is it full screen or is it... I think this is kind of what I would expect if, if, if I would do that. And then I can exit full screen and it puts itself in... in, in it uh, puts uh, the lotion in the basket. Perfect! Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't see. I, I couldn't trigger the bug or whatever. I don't know. Uh, correctly handle mouse reset. But didn't we talk about this? Fix conflict when... Uh, yeah, here we are, here we are. Fix named workspace assignment on output changes. Uh, whatever. Precedence on workspace names. Don't use workspaces. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a trap. Fix windows getting swallowed more than once. No idea what that means. Or maybe that's a very good thing. Maybe this is related to a lot of issues that I've, I've had. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe I should look it up. Erase i3 more version progress line before overwriting or whatever. Running on Fedora, no one cares. Fix crash in focus next sibling. Hmm. I actually do focus next sibling. Or I stopped doing it because there were something weird with that. Maybe this is a good thing also that they have fixed a crash there. And why I use this is because I use tab containers a lot, you know. And sometimes... I remember I did this, this is a long time ago. But I wanted to have like key bindings that didn't focus a specific window. Instead it focused a container. For example, this is the D container. But if I do this, if I do... I3 message uh, and then the D container here. And then I just say focus. See, it focuses the whole container, it doesn't... Uh, what I actually want to do is focus the, the active sibling, I guess. The one, or active child is the correct. Yeah, sibling. Focus next sibling. When would you ever do that? Isn't focus next the same thing? Whatever. Maybe this is unrelated. I think you can do this, child. If you do this instead... No. Yes, there you see. Now it focus first it focuses the container itself and then when that container has focus it does focus child. I couldn't do that immediately because here then it tries to focus this uh, 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 windows child. But first you focus that and then you focus. So if you would ever find yourself in this situation, this is how we do that. But focus next sibling, I have no idea what that is, uh, because focus next, that focuses the next sibling. For example, if I would do that here, it would fo focus next would focus this, and the sibling to this container is this. So next sibling is like, whatever. Moving tiling windows out of the scratch pad. I think I have issues with this right now. I think this is a good thing because I actually move tiling containers to the scratch pad and sometimes I have noticed this on, on this last install here with the XFC stuff. I thought it was related to that. Sometimes when I bring containers back from the scratch pad, if I'm not careful, uh, I will not try to demonstrate it here, here because it gets really messed up. I have to restart X basically when it happens. Something really uh, off is going on and maybe I, I, this might be related to that so so this is probably a good thing um, floating maybe reassign works 
interface only refocus if pre previously focused uh, 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 fixes uh, an issue with KDE notifications. Okay. Crash invalid JSON input in stored layouts. No one uses that that way, so who cares? Uh, fix monitor change during uh, with ITB restored by moving content for non existing output containers. No idea what it means, but it's probably a good thing. Because I actually do restores and stuff and have noticed some, some odd behavior. So, as you can see, mostly uh, or only <laughs> bug fixes. Most of the bugs are really, really weird, you know. I could barely uh, reproduce any of them uh, because they are so fringe and it is. I3 is a great software, it is very stable and the, the, the development is very serious and they, they know what they're doing, what they are, uh, uh, what I3 is and what it should be and their uh, take on that is that I3 should be what I3 is, which is a very good, good uh, uh, way of approaching your software different from many other open source uh, uh, projects where it's uh, this software is what the community wants it to be and what every contributor want to uh, have an idea about you know we add all the features I love i3 it's the best window manager it's it's like top three best software even I'm not joking, I think this is a excellent uh, 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 release, uh, release note here. <laughs> also, the fact that it's a TXT file, um, that there is no explanation about any of these, and these actual features here, uh, this tiling from, floating from, there's no explanation at all about what it actually is in this, in this stuff here. Uh, but there is also another thing that they don't even mention here in this release notes that is the big, uh, big kahuna of this release and it's, it's actually a very big thing that they have changed uh, the build system so it's no, now using Meson or Meson build system and there is uh, a couple of comments here <laughs> people who had problems installing it because it's a new release you, know? you want to install the new release I got weird issues, I haven't seen this bit before, it's required. And then secure uh, Mika Stoppelberg here is a take a look at the release notes. With this uh, version i3 switches its build system from Auto Tools. And Auto Tools is what I showed you in the last video with uh, 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 Genmon and, and all the XFCE programs uses Auto Tools for, for example. It's a very uh, old and common uh, uh, build system. But now they are using Meson instead, uh, and then just reference this uh, building i3. I will have to look into this myself because I haven't researched this at all. I don't even know what this Meson really is. Uh, well, I would like better, better documentation. Uh, which sort of documentation are you looking for? <laughs> which aspects would you see unchanged? Um, Installing to USR local is best practice for software that is outside your package manager. Yeah, well, that maybe is true, maybe not. And also, it's Debian do that, Arch doesn't do that uh, most of the time. Uh, and then here, this important uh, comment here. Note that in general, the i3 project's take on this matter is that users should not need to build from the source and should use i3 from their Linux distribution instead. They actually don't don't want uh, anyone building it from source, which is also like a good aim to have. That this we, we make it e good for the distributions instead, instead of making like a convenient, uh, easy make file for for the users. Instead, make it easy for for those who actually make the packages for the distributions to to, to build. Because I think this build will be a lot faster and and easier for those who actually build this but apparently and if you read this thread you will find instructions on how to actually build it because as far as i understand 
there is no good instructions on how to actually build this from source and install it, most importantly here. And I don't want to highlight that, uh, how, how, how that is done, since it isn't really, they don't intend, intend for it to be like that. He, he even re repeats the exact same uh, comment here, but we don't want users to uh, need, and, and I guess that's, that's uh, good to highlight that, that they don't want users to need to build it from source, they instead can rely on their distributions. Um, but of course, you it is possible if you just read the documentation and uh, and if you need to build it, you are probably a developer, you know, or, or have hacked on the source code, and then you should also uh, understand how building that source works, you know. Whatever, great news, everybody! Great, great news. Uh,